quick question, everyone. Have you ever wondered as to why we even need gears to begin with? Is it to increase speed, to improve efficiency and save fuel, to get more force or torque, to get more power, or all of the above? In this video, we'll explore these ideas with a simplified bare-bones engine. All we know is that this engine can deliver a torque equivalent to lifting 100 kilograms at its axle. Now, let us connect the engine's axle to the crankshaft through the clutch mechanism. And we can safely assume our engine will have no trouble lifting that 100 kilogram weight. And as expected, our engine didn't even break a sweat. All right, let's raise the stakes. Forget 100 kilos. Can this engine lift 1,000 kilos? 10 times the load. Time to find out. Now, here's the thing. This isn't just theory. Engineers and technicians deal with these situations every day. Real-world machines face these limits all the time. But rather than explain, let's show what happens next. Okay, let's reconnect the engine to the axle. Let's see what happens. Bang! And there it is, a dead stall. Exactly as expected. After all, our engine was only rated for 100 kilos at the axle. So how do engineers solve this? Time to bring in the hero of our story. Gears. Observe how a small red gear on the axle meshes with a much larger blue gear. And notice, the blue gear's radius is 10 times bigger. Remember that detail. The R to 10 R ratio. It holds the key to something we will discuss shortly, called mechanical advantage. Okay then, the setup's ready. Let's reconnect the axle to the engine shaft. What do you think would happen this time? Look at that. The engine's alive. No stall, no bang this time. The 1,000 kilo load is moving. But did you catch the detail? Compared to the 100 kilo lift, this is painfully slow. That's the trade-off. Thus we have victory. A working solution, but at a price. Speed. And that's the trade-off of using reduction gears. Quick recap. Remember our opening quiz. Why do we need gears? To go faster? Save fuel? Get more torque? Get more power? So far, we've uncovered one truth. Gears give us a way to control torque, as we saw with reduction gears. That's their magic. All right. Here's another quick question. When our engine lifted 10 times its rated load, did we just break the laws of physics? Did gears somehow create extra power out of thin air? Nope. Energy cannot be created out of thin air. The trick lies in something called mechanical advantage. So let's dive into mechanical advantage, the trick engineers use to multiply force. The term mechanical advantage sounds a bit technical, right? But here's the twist. We use it almost every single day without even noticing. To prove it, we've set up something so simple, you could try it at home. Now using a broomstick as a lever and a small 200 milliliters bottle on one side and a heavy 2 liter bottle on the other, will this little bottle be able to lift a big one? Well, it did manage to lift the 2 liter bottle by 5 centimeters. Next, what if we raise the stakes? Forget the 2 liter bottle. This time, we're going for 50 liters. And yes, I had to bring out a special custom-made metal broomstick for this stunt. Let's see if the principle still holds. And what do you know? Even before I could finish my line, the 3 kilo bottle had already lifted the 50 liter one. So yes, the principle holds. And now would be the perfect moment to dig into some simple math to see what's really happening here. The thing is that we can't create or destroy energy. All we can do is transfer it. That's the principle of conservation of energy. So when my 3.2 kilo bottle moved down half a meter, it spent about 16 joules of energy. And when the 50 kilo bottle rose just 3 centimeters, it gained the exact same 16 joules. No magic, just energy being shifted around. And that brings us to the heart of it, mechanical advantage. In plain English, it means we can trade distance for force. 
We move something light a long way, and in return, we can move something heavy a little way. In other words, the longer the distance you move a force, the less force you need, and vice versa. And we use this principle every single day without even noticing it. You might be surprised that even at home it is used at over dozens of places. Let me show you just three quick examples. Example 1. The Humble Wrench If you hold it right near the jaws, good luck moving it. But shift your grip to the far end of the handle. Suddenly, it's easy. That's mechanical advantage at work. Example number two, the door handle. Let's try a quick experiment. Try pushing down the lever by placing your finger right next to the pivot point. Feels tough, right? Next, slide your finger all the way to the end of the handle. And suddenly, it's so much easier. And example three, the door itself. Try pushing it right near the hinges. Feel how it's heavy and stubborn. But now, move your hand to the edge, far from the hinge, and whoosh, it swings open with hardly any effort. Once again, mechanical advantage quietly doing its job. Next, let's quickly revisit our opening quiz. And following our discussion on mechanical advantage and conservation of energy, you most likely agree that answer four is incorrect. Okay, guys, we've already crossed a seven-minute mark, so the rest of the questions will have to wait for a follow-up video. But before we wrap up, let's quickly revisit our simple engine and see how mechanical advantage shows up in gears. Now, notice we placed two markers, one on each gear, by watching them, we can measure how far each gear turns in a given time. Then, using the formula for mechanical advantage, we can calculate the force or torque transferred to the axle of the blue gear. So, we can see that the blue gear's axle makes one full turn for every 10 turns of the red gear's axle. Now, let's plug these values into the mechanical advantage formula. If we assume both axles to have a radius r, and that the radius of red gear is also r, then the rotational force, or torque available at axle of blue gear, come to 1,000 kilograms equivalent. Thus, we see that above reduction gear has increased the torque by 10 folds. And this was why we managed to lift the 1,000 weight using this setup. So, that's where we'll pause this video. But don't think the story of gears ends here. In part two, We'll peek under the hood of a car engine and its gearbox. That's where gears aren't just about turning, but about getting optimum efficiency out of the engine. Curious to see how? Stay tuned. Also, if you did enjoy this video or found its contents useful, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you in our next video.